be victorious is already in you. Christ in me, the hope of glory. Everybody yell, he's in me. I love that first John 3, 9. Oh my goodness. The seed of God. The Bible says that we must be washed in the water of the word. When a seed is planted in the ground, it has to be watered, 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 watered. This is the water of the word according to Paul. Don't you think it's interesting that he calls it the water of the word? Why? Because it's watering the seed of God. You see, if I wanted this to become an avocado, I couldn't just stick it in the ground. I'd have to water it, wouldn't I? Well, the seed of God is on the inside of us, but we have to water it. We have to water it. You're here today getting watered. Monday morning, you turn my program on, you're going to get watered. Sunday when you go to church, you're going to get watered. Somebody says, where are you going? I'm going to get watered. Getting a little dry. 2 Corinthians 3.18. Now where the Spirit of the Lord is, verse 17, 2 Corinthians 3.17, where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Not legalism. Liberty. And that's not the freedom to sin, it's the freedom not to have to. Whoa, Jesus. Verse 18, now all of us as with unveiled face. Now have you ever wondered what in the world that means? And all of us as with unveiled face, because we continue to behold in the word of God as in a mirror the glory of the Lord, we are constantly being transfigured into his very own image from one degree of glory to another. So here's the bottom line. This shows me Jesus. As long as I'm looking in here, it's like a mirror, and I see Christ. And if I water this seed with this word, then I will be transformed, not conformed. That's from the outside in. Transformed is from the inside out. I'll be transformed into his image, into his image in little tiny degrees of growth and glory. Doesn't happen all at once. And you've got to learn how to enjoy the glory you're in and not worry about getting into somebody else's glory. If you're doing five minutes of glorious prayer every morning, then don't you let Sister Super Christian condemn you. You say, this is the glory I'm in right now, and thank you, I'm going to enjoy my glory. Amen? Not where I need to be, thank God, I'm not where I used to be. I'm okay, and I'm on my way. I'm going to enjoy the journey. Now, what about this unveiled face thing? And all of us is with unveiled face because we continue to behold in the Word of God, the glory of God. Okay, so there's a difference looking at this with a veiled face and an unveiled face. Joyce, what are you talking about? Okay, Moses, when he came down from Mount Sinai from getting the law, had so much glory shining on his face that they had to put a veil over his face to even be able to look at him. Now, if the law gives that much glory, how much glory should there be from grace without the law? So here's what he's saying. And, you know, Paul is talking to Corinthians who had lived under the law. They knew all about the veil. And really what that veil means is you're getting a shadow of what God is like, but you're really not seeing God. You're not really, you can't 